Portugal's uh, progressive drug reform program and and it, and it is it's a progressive reform program, but it but it, in my opinion, it is still reform. It can go a little further, but I understand why they started with the way it did. And we'll get into all of that in just a moment. Uh, so uh, I want to start here. I want to start with what the program actually is and why it got instated. So some of you guys, if you guys don't know, uh, the country of Portugal, which if you don't know where Portugal is, it's right next to Spain in, in Europe. Uh, part of the EU, I believe, part of the EU, uh, they had a major problem with drugs uh, in uh, in the 80s and 90s, and, and things started escalating. There was a lot of people doing drugs. There was a lot of ODs in that country. Um, they were looking at about 1% of the population was ODing, which I know, again, like whenever you kind of bring that sort of stuff up, it's the same thing with like the, with COVID is like when we say like at least one to 2% of the population is going to die. Everybody's like, who gives a shit? Not a big deal. But on a global level, like when you look at 1% of 7 billion people, that's a lot of fucking people. Right. Um, and there's going to be a bunch of people that are, you know, that that talk about population control that are going to keep advocating for the death of most people. And I I personally look at that. It's it's just such a fatalist view. Uh, and instead of being like, what can we all do together? It's like, let's get rid of people so like more of us can have access to resources and so on and so forth. It's it's too it's it's fatalist and it kind of builds itself into the capitalist system. Um but part of the thing is like, I mean, one percent of people were were ODing in um in in Portugal, uh, and that's still like a good portion of the population, right? Um, that doesn't mean that I mean that there were probably a lot more people using drugs, um, and using drugs probably not to the best of their ability, right? Like they were probably using the needle drugs wrong, and and that was part of what was also happening because the the height of this problem was the fact that because of improper needle use and needle sharing within the heroin communities, uh, there was a lot of HIV. Portugal was having an HIV and AIDS epidemic because of improper needle use, right? So it became this public health problem. And so that's what they decided to look at it as. Rather than looking at it as a criminal problem, they were like, let's look at it on a on a on a healthcare basis, right? What do we do when it's a public health crisis? Which this problem was. This problem was a public health crisis, considering that a ton of people were starting to get HIV and AIDS from you know needle sharing and improper needle use. Yeah, this is now a health crisis. Um, so they looked at they they were like, let's just look at the whole drug issue in and of itself as a a health problem rather than um you know a, a criminal problem rather than putting people in in prison for uh possession and then they they relapse and then they die in prison or something like that right or or worse you know something else happens to them uh or they have to join a gang or 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 they get into a, a different drug or something like that and once you start demonizing these sort of things right like um, the the drug traffickers and the drug producers will start getting creative and they will make stronger drugs and they will make better drugs than what's out there. So that problem does not exist in Portugal because in 2001, they decided to look at drug addiction and drug use as a public health concern, primarily drug abuse, not just doing drugs on occasion. Um, you know, but so what they did was they implemented this program where they shifted uh, all of their drug cases from the criminal justice system to the Ministry of Health, which, yes, the Ministry of Health does sound like it's a Harry Potter branch of government. Uh, but like magic, they kind of took care of a lot of their addiction problems by looking at it as a health is issue and not as a criminal justice issue. So uh, they decriminalized drugs. What does that mean? That's not full legalization. That doesn't mean that you can uh, go to a mall in Portugal and buy some hash or buy a gram of Coke or something like that, right? It, it just means that if you are a member of the public and you are caught with drugs um, and it doesn't seem like you are trafficking said drugs, you don't go to prison. That's it. I mean, that it's in and of itself has transformed their society in uh, like 
immensely you know like the, it has completely transformed their society <laughs> more than what you would more than what people would believe more than what people would think um it has transformed their society uh in in this way so first and foremost what it's done is you don't get a prison sentence but what you do get is you go see uh a a sociologist a social scientist is who you get to see and you go and talk to this person um, and they get a bunch of information from you, right? Like, how long have you been doing this? How many hits of hash do you need a day? Like, do you smoke a whole bunch? Do you? And then they ask you, like, do you feel like you have a problem? Um, if it's your first offense, they leave you with a warning. They give you some pamphlets and they're like, hey, check this place, these places out. If you feel like th this is going to become a huge issue, right? Uh, and then if it becomes more frequent that you do get caught with drugs, it means that they will start being a little bit more forceful about like going to rehabilitation centers. Uh, that's one of the major things is you go to a rehab center or you go to an addiction center and you you get help that way. Right. The, the point of Portugal's program was to reduce the, the use of needle sharing um, and to reduce just drug use in general. They wanted their society to be not drug free, but more drug responsible. Uh, that's sort of the way that they they looked at it. But if you didn't want to take it, like, let's say they were just like, hey, this is your fourth offense. Uh, and we really, really recommend that you go see th this rehab clinic uh, and they're going to help you kind of work through some new coping mechanisms, so on and so forth. And the person goes, Nate, you know what? I'm good. I'm, I'm all right. I'm, 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 I don't feel like I have a problem. Then they'll go, OK, well, we have this program that we're going to enlist you in that that, you know, essentially delivers drugs to you. Um, and that's what they do. They, they give you a controlled amount of the drug that you are, you know, spe and specifically a lot of this is done for heroin because heroin is just such a huge issue. Um, not just in Portugal, obviously it's, it's a huge issue everywhere. Uh, it's a, it's a particularly a lot more dangerous of a drug, uh, to, to use. It has a lot of, lot more dangerous consequences attached to it. Uh, so, you know, and, and there was a lot of heroin use in, in Portugal itself. So they were basically like, let's send psychologists out there. Uh, we'll collect, collect people's used needles. We'll collect people's wastes and we'll give them new drugs and we'll give them new paraphernalia to use clean, sanitized, right? Still wrapped, fresh, uh, paraphernalia to use. That's that's one of the, the the things that they do. They they have psychologists that go in and they deliver this stuff to the people. That's that's one of the things they do. So they deliver clean supplies, dosage of drugs, and then they provide also online uh, on site therapy. I should say on on uh, now all therapy is online, but they provide on site therapy. That means that these psychologists are going and talking to these people and being like, hey, how you doing? What's going on? Like, do you feel like you're using more heroin? Do you feel like you're using less right now? Um, what are your stressors? What makes you want to use the drug? Like, do you feel more comfortable? So, you know, so on and so forth. So they have a they have a actual psychologists going in and dealing with this as if it was it was a health issue, as if it was a mental health issue. They don't go in there with armed guards. They don't go in there with drugs. They go in there with a, with a biohazard container and, you know, fucking like green uh, safety vests and a bag full of controlled substances. And it is controlled because they're giving them doses. Right. And they're like, hey, we see you either daily or weekly. What do you need today? Do you need two? Do you need three? Do you need one? Are you are you scaling back? Do you feel like you need to quit? Here's some resources that you guys can use. So on. And so, so they're really there to make sure that people aren't ODing on the streets, that people are taking this seriously. And not just that, but they have also mobile methadone clinics uh, that also provide the same thing. So so let's say you're not you don't want to do the methadone, but you need a your your heroin your your heroin user that needs a hit that day and they go to the mobile methadone clinic and they go, Hey, I'm here for this, and then they give them all the clean stuff and they're like, Here's one hit. Cool. Right? And it's a controlled thing. And this, you know, uh, 
in ni- in 19 years it has decreased uh overdoses in portugal um debts and addictions have decreased teenage use of drugs have decreased because it's available everywhere part of the allure is that it's illegal Right? Like, it feels like you're doing something fun and cool and rebellious. Look out. Part of the allure is that. So they have all of these things available for 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 their society. And it's bettering their society. <coughs> it's good for their society. And people that have that were addicted to drugs are now going to get help um, rather than be thrown into prison. So that's kind of awesome, in my opinion. But that's I mean, this is this is sort of the conservative argument, too, is they're like, oh, but they're not legalizing all the drugs. And I do think that they should legalize all the drugs. And I'll get to my reasons behind why and what I think could be done. Right. In just the, in just a minute, but America doesn't do any of this stuff, right? Uh, uh, America has a shit ton of people going to prison over nonviolent drug crimes. We have we we fund the prison industrial complex. We were, we basically looked at uh, the usage of drugs and we said, hey, if we make this illegal, uh, we can we can capitalize on it by putting more people in prison. And the more people we put into prison and the more strict and crazy our laws get and the more convoluted that our laws get, especially surrounding drug usage. And if we add a racial bias to it, we can flood our prison systems and make money off of it. And that's what they did. Across the entire country, federally, we can't decide what to do. And across the entire country... Pretty much all Americans want to legalize drugs, want to legalize, especially cannabis, specifically cannabis. That's the one that was on the the ballot initiatives and all that, right? Like everybody voted to legalize cannabis in their states. South Dakota, like red states are like wanting to legalize it because they see the value and benefit in it. The argument of the gateway drug, the reefer madness argument is all fucking gone. Right. Like no one, no one in their right mind legitimately believes a Republican senator when they say, oh, well, yeah, 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 you smoke the reefer and you start listening to jazz and then your penis comes out and anything with the hole is fair game. No one believes that shit. Because it's not true. Why would you believe it? (laughs) You know. No one believes the gateway drug argument. No one's like, oh, if you smoke a reefer, then the next thing you know, you're putting your penis inside of a syringe and getting all the heroin through your dick. That's it's like no one believes that shit anymore. Right. The dare program, bunch of fucking lies. You have a cop coming in and scaring the shit out of fucking what? Eight to 12 year olds. (laughs) about drugs that they have that, that that the cop has never done how how can a cop tell you the the issues with with marijuana or any other drug if they've never tried it i want anthony kiedis to come in that's who should be doing the dare program you know like read anthony kiedis's book by the way i read anthony kiedis's book uh scar tissue when i was in college and i as i'm reading that book it's pretty dangerous because as i'm reading that book i'm like heroin not that bad. It kind of makes you a crazy goof, but it's terrible. You guys like the dude has to get ozone injections and stuff like he's a fucking mess, right? Like, but that's who should be going around and being like, guys, it feels awesome. But check out all of these other things that the drug does. Right. Education is a big um, d- real drug. Education is a big part of legalizing and decriminalizing this stuff. But this is also what the anti defund the police movement is about, because how can you fund the programs that actually need to be funded if you're overfunding the criminal justice end of things? When you make it illegal, you're like, oh, but we need more cops to get all these drugs off the street. Where are all these people getting these drugs? So now you've also opened up a market for the drug dealers, for the drug traffickers. To create a whole new cycle of violence because you've because you've criminalized it. And you have cops that are over militarized 
because we have a military that has a surplus in weapons that they don't use because we're we can't wage as many wars as weapons we have. Which is why we fund both sides, by the way. Because that's what happens in an unfettered capitalist system. The lines get blurred between the good guys and the bad guys. But if you defund the police, then you can fund psychologists and sociologists and addiction counselors and therapists and people that know what to do with the drugs. Mobile methadone clinics. You can fund all of these things. We're spending billions of dollars on on a, a police industry that has essentially become the poster child of killing black people and people of color in this country and getting away with it, right? We had a grand jury in Louisville we saw earlier where they were like, Mac, but I don't know, maybe? Not really, though. The other two guys were going to let go free, but this guy, he shot a wall. Okay, we're going to give him maybe three to five, kind of, sort of, but let him out on good behavior anyway. Fucking Darren Wilson put his knee on a man's neck for close to nine minutes. And they're trying to get him off. That's the criminal justice system that also looks at a plant and says that it's dangerous and needs to be on a schedule one it's considered a Schedule One narcotic, the most dangerous of all narcotics. This is not a rational criminal justice system. A rational criminal justice system would look at drug addiction not as a criminal behavior, but as a, 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 a public health or a mental health one, which means that the cops would have to be less funded and you would have to o refund or expand funding I'm a fucking comedian that's sitting in my bedroom with a microphone that, and I can figure this shit out. But Democrats and Republicans who get paid hundreds and millions of dollars every year to legislate this shit can't, but they can. They're just paid off by big pharma and all that. And that's the other thing, like big pharma, <laughs> they've, I mean, they're, they're just drug peddlers in and of themselves, right? How many Americans are medicated constantly? But the problem isn't, and I mentioned this in a, in a standup album, uh, I put out a couple of years ago. It's the, the problem isn't that, that people are using drugs. It's that they want you to use their drugs, not our drugs. Our drugs are already out there. Right. And, and they've made our drugs illegal. You know, you can't recreationally smoke, smoke marijuana for all of these bullshit reasons. You can't have LSD or MDMA to help with your anxiety or your depression or your PTSD that American capitalism has given you. You can't have any of those things, but you can have uh, a litany of other drugs, Xanax, Soloft. Uh, I, I saw a drug commercial the other day where it said side effects may include death. The, what? That's not... You're just saying it and you're just expecting people, but we're still allowing that to be on the fucking market. The side effect of heroin can also be death, but that's illegal. But the side effect of some fucking pharmaceutical drug is also death, but that's allowed because it's their drug. And that's that's the that's the difference. They get the price gouge and control that drug. And that's what they really want. If they can control the drug, then then we're fine. Now you look at states that have legalized marijuana. You 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 look at states like Colorado and Washington, right? I mean, huge profits in those states. Huge profits in those states. So that's I mean, it's you know, so it doesn't it, it that's that's not really an issue. Is that it, we're, we're not worried about profits. <laughs> I mean, the, like the legal cannabis world is making profits, um, and I do believe that the the legislation to let them. Uh, be banked is um just went through but in reality if we had public banks you know uh the marijuana industry would be a underbanked and unbanked society and public banks specifically help those people which means that if we had a public bank option like if north dakota fucking legalizes weed tomorrow all of those 
dispensaries and head shops and so on and so forth could go to the North Dakota Public Bank, which does exist. Uh, and I've and I've done a video. I've done a video about public banks too. Uh, they would they would be very easily be able to get it. They would easily be able to have a bank account and take credit card information and all that kind of shit. But a lot of the states that do have it legal do see less drug trafficking because it's harder to compete in a market where people can go, I don't need to go under a bridge and knock on a door and go through a, a maze and come to a man, you know, smoking a cigar with a crown and a, and a, a scepter and I have to kiss his scepter. But, and then he knocks on the ground three times and then the whole pedestal moves three levels downward and then I can get my one eighth ounce of weed. I don't have to do that anymore. I can just walk into a thing, show my ID, and everybody goes, uh-huh, you want this one? And then I walk out and go home, and I don't have to feel weird about it. Great. I'm going to choose option B. Because that's what people do. And that's what people should be able to do. If you can regulate it and be in the presence of somebody that knows how to administer it, that's huge. Right? That's massive. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to, to, to address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, uh, that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.